Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD Bodybuilder, back with another video. Today I'm going to be giving you a guide to chest training. I think it's critical to understand each muscle group's anatomy and individual characteristics when designing our training programs. Today we'll be talking about how to train the chest for optimal hypertrophy using science. Quick outline for today, we're going to start off by talking about the anatomy of the chest. And you'll see that I've drawn this diagram already for you guys. Moving on, we'll go on to exercise selection using our understanding of anatomy. Then we'll talk about volume, frequency, intensity, and rep ranges. If you've been getting valid for my content, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get into it. All right, so here's our little anatomy diagram of the chest that I just drew. So over here, just for some landmarking, we've got the humerus, which is your arm bone up here. Then you've got the scapula, which I've just shown a little bit of and then your clavicle, which is this bone right here. Then we've got the sternum, which you can feel in the middle of your chest. And at the bottom, we've got some of the lower ribs. The other ribs are hidden. Basically for bodybuilding, when looking at the chest, we're talking about the pectoralis major muscle. That muscle has three main parts we wanna think of, the upper, mid, and lower pecs. Now briefly, you'll note that all these fibers insert on the proximal humerus. So basically the part of the humerus, which is closest to your shoulder. You can actually feel your pec tendon and where it inserts onto your arm bone. Now you'll hear people talking about the clavicular and sternal heads as being the main players in chest development. The clavicular head refers to the upper pec fibers, and those are these ones that originate from the clavicle. And the sternal head refers to the mid pec fibers, which originate from the sternum. Lastly, we have some lower pec fibers, which originate from your costal cartilages, which are basically the ends of some of your ribs. Now, looking at the anatomy here really helps us in understanding how to train the chest in terms of its function. The main function of the chest is to adduct the arms, which means to bring your arms closer to midline. Basically, any type of pressing movement or fly type movement will achieve this. The other consideration I wanna bring up here is that the clavicular head or your upper pec attaches on the clavicle. When talking about training anatomy, as soon as you have different attachment points, that actually lends itself to specific training for those muscle heads. That means we can specifically emphasize our upper pec fibers. Since the upper pec fibers originate from the clavicle, they also help with shoulder flexion, which is where you bring your arms up. Now I'll note here that with a horizontal pressing movement, you get both shoulder adduction and shoulder flexion. So if you look at my arms, they start out wide, and at the end of the movement, they come together. That's shoulder adduction. But if you look from the side, for example, with a bench press, throughout the movement, your arms are actually also flexing. As you can see, my arms start out lower, and at the end, they end up in a higher position. So now that we understand the anatomy and the function of the pec major muscle, how does this affect our exercise selection? First of all, you wanna be focusing on horizontal pushing movements. Horizontal pushing is going to give you the best bang for your buck in terms of chest training just because it's a compound movement and allows you to move heavy weight. And this gives you a high degree of stimulation and activates the most muscle mass. In terms of pushing movements, I recommend that people focus on horizontal presses. So for example, a barbell or dumbbell bench press. A flat bench press will give you good activation of all of your pec fibers. In terms of bench angles, I do recommend that people include at least one exercise that involves an incline bench. Starting off with a bench angle of 45 degrees is a good start. The incline bench angle will focus on your upper pecs more just because of the way the fibers run. I think having some incline work is helpful because a lot of natural bodybuilders have weak upper pecs and you want to build that upper pec shelf for aesthetics. I don't think that people really need to include decline work because your lower pecs get really well stimulated in flat pressing movements. In terms of grip width, I'd recommend that most people just start off with a moderate grip width and focusing on what makes you feel the strongest. Now flies can be a good isolation work option for the chest. These focus on shoulder adduction, and they can be helpful for adding on volume for your chest without generating a lot of fatigue. But the advantage of pressing movements is that you also train your shoulders and your triceps. So for most beginners, I'd recommend really focusing on just pressing movements. If you're late, intermediate to advanced, or if you have a lot of time in the gym, like six days per week, then you would wanna start including some flies. Now it's more mechanically favorable for the pecs when your arms are in a pronate position, that is palms down. So when you're doing flies, I'd recommend using a pronated grip. Lastly, you wanna make sure you're getting a stretch in your pecs when you train. Luckily for the pecs, this is pretty easy. And all it means is that you need to get a full range of motion with your pressing movements. So for example, when doing a barbell bench press, make sure you bring the barbell all the way down until it touches your chest. Within the exercise selection for your actual horizontal pressing movements, I'd recommend focusing on free weights 
like barbells and dumbbells, especially if you're a beginner. As you become more advanced, you'll want to start introducing a bit more machine work just because you get less fatigue. So for a beginner, I'd really just focus on barbell and dumbbell pressing movements. For an advanced athlete, I would recommend including one barbell movement, one dumbbell movement, one machine movement, and one fly movement in most of your programs. Okay, now that we've talked about training anatomy and biomechanics, let's move on to some of the other training variables for our chest training programs. Starting off with volume, it's gonna be important to notice that the chests are relatively fast twitch dominant. Fast twitch dominant fibers typically respond better to heavier training with lower volumes. Volume refers to the number of sets you do in the week. And for chest, I'd recommend aiming for the low to moderate end of things. Note that the optimal volume will vary depending on the person as well as by muscle group. So you really need to experiment to find what works best for you for each muscle group. So I'd recommend just experimenting with different set volumes, but for the chest, you're gonna be on the low to moderate end compared to other muscle groups within your own training program. Next up in terms of frequency, for most people, I recommend training your chest somewhere between two to four times per week. This will depend somewhat on your training volume. So if you're training with very high volumes, you might need more days in the week to accommodate that volume. Okay, lastly, let's talk about intensity and rep ranges. Now, intensity is basically the load on the bar, and this is closely related to rep ranges. Your lower rep ranges will correspond to heavier weights. Now, since the chest is fast switch dominant, I recommend focusing more on lower rep ranges. So I'd recommend that you focus on the five to 10 rep range. Now note that rep ranges are very individual and also depend on the specific exercise you're doing. Here are a few examples of how I like to program exercises and optimal rep ranges. You can see these patterns in my programs that I've put out. So I'll usually like using the five to eight rep range for your main heavy pressing movement like a barbell or dumbbell bench press. Then I like to use the six to 10 and eight to 12 rep ranges for most of your other pressing movements, like an incline bench, close grip, or machine type bench press. And most of your work for the chest is going to lie in these rep ranges. Lastly, you might use say the 10 to 15 or the 12 to 20 rep ranges for your machine bench presses and your flies. For chest training, for most people, the minority of your work will fall into these higher rep ranges. Remember that all of these recommendations are just starting points to jumpstart your own programming. Remember to think of your body like a laboratory and try experimenting with these different variables. That's all for now, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like the video and leave me a comment below. I'm really good about answering every single one of my comments, so you'll definitely hear back from me. In particular, what are your favorite chest exercises? Let me know. To take your knowledge to the next level, check out my affiliate link for mass or monthly applications in strength sport in the description. Mass is one of the best information sources out there for science-based hypertrophy advice. If you're looking for a hypertrophy training program, check out this playlist that has all of my full hypertrophy programs where I do a full program walkthrough and share every single aspect of the program, including exercises, sets, and reps. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.